evening, Jane. Check. Rear thrusters. Check. Picnic basket. Uh, check. Right, let's take them. Okay, I love when we're watching now, late, now or later, hidden here along with. And something went a bit wrong, which is to be expected because I was doing a bit experimental there by using scene switches instead of just switching different things on and off. Where the heck is game? There is game capture, right? It's not. No, that's. Capture any full screen, I guess. It, that worked with this game last week, but. Okay, let's see, let's specify it a bit. No, not that. Specific window, hard space ship right here. There we go. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Two points. Make sure that the game is actually being captured again before starting this. And uh, yeah, also adding in unmute to the, uh, <laughs> to the third hotkey. Or just... Have it not muted at all because, well, in the fur in the pre-screen and intro scene, it's not there, so yeah, should be safe. Anyways, welcome back to Hard Space Shipbreaker. Last time we had to restart again, or well, last week we had to restart again because a big update was put in, and that's a reset progression, like it says here. So we're going through this again. Uh, if this happens. Again, when they put in the third campaign act, then I'll just play through that. Yeah, you know, play through acts one and two off screen. Uh, drain disabled. We're going on easy because, yeah. It, otherwise, we'd be limited to 15 minutes per shift on these you know, things, and that would be, yeah, it, that would get annoying. Hello, ship breaker. Overnight genetic backup complete. Pattern deviation nominal. Have a good day. What? Okay, new sticker. Rating rank 10. Yeah, stupid payments every time. So far, we are doing well. Any new messages? <laughs> no, not yet. Uh, yeah, here's our funny character, because apparently in the far future, characters, well, aren't even getting names anymore. And yes, it still squeaks as we push past. No mysterious flashes this time. I'm I'm curious if we'll hear about that at some point, or maybe it's just going to be left uh, yeah, to nothing. The heck is that noise? Hmm. Yeah. I hope it isn't the sound of our equipment malfunctioning. Okay, everything is still at 100%. Alright, well, let's get to work then. Last time we tore up another ship, so we get to pick a new one. Okay, now we get the the Exolab mackerels. I'll st I'd still much rather get to the next, yeah, to the next model of ship. Uh, the Caustic Benoit Maru, the Pacific Squimish Cruiser, Anomi, Anon, Anonymy Number 8, and the Pacifica. Okay, of all of those, this one is the most normal. But let's go with uh, the, this one. Oh, and the slot best worse than on the packaging, huh? No, a lot that looks a lot worse than the, on the than the packaging it gave beforehand. This thing has uh, seen some shit, it seems. And it, it seems to be lacking a bunch of sensors on the top, at least. It's. Okay, let's get to work with the outside stuff as always. Easy enough to remove. And now we have tethers available to us, it seems. 
which I'll show off on the next bit that we remove. Let's see those. I think these need to be cut loose from the inside. Don't remember these that much. Nope. Okay, solar battery 100k. Oh, yeah, <laughs> those are going to be very useful. Little uh, easy picks. I know about artificial intelligence uh, experiments, but I don't think they can make artificial sugar intelligent. Yeah. Salvage deposit accepted. Credit transferred. Okay. One and two. Let's see, how do we use... Wait, there's the, the tethers button is there, but I don't know if that was there before. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Put these things in together. Let's see. One high gain antenna. Account credit applied. And an amplifier. Yeah, we can keep those stuck together. No then. That is the outside done mostly. So where is there's the airlock? Right between these processing things. Okay. Still no atmosphere stuff with this like that would be one okay forgot to close the door after i refilled my water bottle now on, on the one hand it is it does take it nice and easy with um okay so, uh, something isn't interfering with oh i already know what is interfering with the sa with our interface that's that thing there uh, yeah, as I was saying, it is nice that they take things nice and slow, that you can figure out each hazard on its own. But on the other hand, if you are returning like, well, we are, it does get annoying in how slowly it can go. And the heck is that there? There's more junk? Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the scientific vessels that we'll be tearing apart will have a lot of electronics like this inside of it. A lot of them will be vulnerable, because, yeah, the outside stuff, they only had one yellow health bar on them. So, basically, if we had bumped them into something too hard, they'd become useless to us. Okay. For now, let's pop the cork off of this place. Send these off on their own. Okay. Find it a bit odd that they have the grapple or the tethers, cancel tethers button already there, even though we don't have access to them yet. Hmm. Ooh. Okay, that could have bumped the Okay, it's a com it's a commas already. Let's see. And this must be part of it. Compla it's complaining about the lights that we destroyed, even though those things are pretty much useless. Um, let's see. 
We don't have any the other scanning modes yet, so we can't see if there is anything dangerous behind this. Hopefully there's not. But here goes. Okay. That one and that okay, that comes off on its own. Is that part... Okay, I very much doubt that it connects all the way through to this thing. Uh, maybe it does, or could I just pull these off on their own anyways? Yeah, it is... Well, it is scientific equipment, and this communication stuff is always pricey. And yeah, I could just tear them off on their own. Okay, the beam complaining... Oh, as it is, it could just as easily be lost in space, just from just a single bump or something. Yeah, most likely. For some reason, I was <laughs> swapping back to Dutch there. a bit more than wanted, but no, nothing bad. <laughs> no, Herbs is uh, Paul. Let's... Nope, it's just a little bit of junk to throw out. Now, the flooring should be safe. Uh, Wodan does translate to Odin in Dutch, I think. Uh, Heerst. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> this thing has seen some shit. Why is this plate stuck? There we go. Just give it a bit of an extra nudge. Okay, doesn't ring a bell to me, but then again, I'm not the, I'm not a music expert. Basically, I am the name, and uh, I am on on a mammoth. Just about that. Salvage 
Right, that's the airlock itself. Yeah. Which was, what, like over a year or two ago? Maybe even three? Suddenly puts a timer on since you've met uh, <laughs> your best friend. Yeah. Uh, well, we are we we interact a lot, so good friends at the very least would be. And some people do get uh, annoyed when people. People start uh, naming others best friend and such. Okay. <laughs> Salvage secured. Credit deposited. Yeah, and haven't tried to murder each other yet. <laughs> Okay, no. Uh, go on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have some new things. So that's a new position for a, a power cell. Okay. Uh, yeah. Some new things are starting to show up again. The oxygen bottles, uh, repair kits. We want these because we otherwise have to pay for those. And yeah, if we had oxygen being drained, we could pick these up for a free refill. But yeah, since we're going on easy mode, there's no need to. Forgiven. Okay, just nudge that thing out a bit. <laughs> uh, usually I'm the one uh, who has to call for birth. <laughs> yeah, though you'll likely play as them with uh, Warhammer 3. Okay. Now we're getting to the main prize, the reactor. These, let's have a look at... Uh, yeah, I'll finish up first. Uh, the reactors, these are the main prize in any ship. They will, they aren't as much, they weren't, aren't worth as much as uh, like the rest of the ship combined, but they are worth a hell of a lot. And hello there, Gear Wrench, 90. Thank you for following. And yeah, the, the problem with these things is, is that the moment you pull them out, they start going critical and you suddenly have a time limit. So yeah, we need to get that thing down there immediately. Okay, so 375k. They have nerfed the price a bit. Before those were worth about half a million on their own. Okay, I'm guessing that is to not have people just tear out the reactor 
and then call it a day and, and loop. that caused a bit of an electrical problem. Yeah, I, I've I've tried Warhammer Total Warhammer 2 a few times, but it's never really lasted that long because yeah, I'm not very good at it. I typically end up with rebellions or just nothing ends up happening for so long that I get bored. <laughs> Yeah, and gear wrench in the chat. Uh, what game is this? This is Hard Space Shipbreaker. It's, uh, I think, yeah, it is still in early access. Basically, it's a uh, uh, what is the English name for it? It's that uh, doctor game, or uh, I think it's called Operation in English. Yeah, it's basically Operation with spaceships where you have to tear stuff up, up throw them in the right bins, and. And, uh, yeah, pay off your billion-dollar debt. <laughs> and, yeah, it looks pretty great. And the me mechanics are pretty nice as well, because basically everything that starts moving will not stop moving until it hits something. All right. Yeah, it's called Hard Space, after all, so it's going with Hard Space rules. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've made that mistake a few times as well. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, with the stuff that we're depositing in places, the barge down there is, is the most valuable stuff. Next is the processing stuff. And the rest of the junk goes in the furnace for it to just be broken down. Okay. Besides the reactors, we, which we also have to deal with now, we have to deal with the thrusters. Uh, LOL sounds like fun, PC only or on consoles too? I'm not too sure. I, I'm playing this on Steam. Um, a quick Google should be able to help with that, but I can't confirm. Okay, that went well. The, hmm? uh, the, the the thrusters can be a bit annoying at times, since there's a random chance for them to blow up for no apparent reason on the Mackerel ships. But, yeah, I'm guessing at the moment it's likely they're only for the PC, but most of these early access games eventually come to uh, the consoles as well at some point. Yeah, and this game is in early access, so having to focus on one system at a time would be beneficial for them. Uh, of note with this is that we are playing on the easy mode at the moment, which comes without a time limit, or rather two time limits, the time limit of well, a hard 50 minutes per uh, shift, and uh, just a, hard, a less hard time limit of oxygen. Another one of these, we want those. Because our stuff is starting to break down now as well. Okay. That's going on its solo tour now. In the meantime, we... ride the squeeze in between. Ah, yeah, we have... We have a physical body in this. And hello, another bunny for our collection. Okay, we'll have to remove the beds before we can get to the lower plating. But, uh, yeah, th this is a good game. It can get a bit of a drag later on when there is no new stuff, but that's with basically every early access game. Let's see. I want 
that's uh, shove the roof a bit with ourselves and let's see how much this thing is worth thirty thousand a decent amount send that off to the processor we do not care about the lamp because that's basically the only the price of bricks and yeah nobody wants a used mattress We are still in a elongated tutorial, you could say. We don't have access to all of our features at the moment, and only the basic class of ship, which is the, the mackerel. Uh, that launched the terminal from it, okay. So yeah, we'll get more we'll get more toys to play with as we go. Now where did that there it is? Okay. mattress to get rid of. Do we actually get paid for these or could we just as easily chuck them into space? And again, we are already in space. Okay, 6,000. <laughs> it would just burn up in the atmosphere, but uh, I think they have enough problems down there already, seeing by how, well, much more blue there is. Yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> in universe life on <laughs> in universe life down there is a uh, pretty shitty to say easily <laughs> Where did this? oh yeah each of these beds comes with a battery as well We pulled the energy from the ship a bit early because it, there's no power to the door to the cockpit at the moment. But we'll be able to remedy that with our cutter later on. But now let's just keep clearing this out. And then we can get into the sides of the ship. Okay, I'm here with that. And of course, red means that the beam is having a bit of trouble. With keeping hold of something. Could be because something is in between. Could be because you are looking away too much or something. Alright. Dirty mattress. And now we can get... Well, we could have gotten to these hard points here earlier, but oh well. Give it a shove. Yep, it's a bit of... Okay, I thought it was loose, but apparently not. Uh, these panels weigh a lot more, of course, as it shows uh, on the screen in the, down in the middle a bit. It gives us uh, yeah, how much it weighs. And how much we compare against that by the bar next to it. A bit, it'd be a bit hard for me to point out here, because I, if I'd point at the screen, it wouldn't, well, mean anything, really. Okay, oh, we've, okay, we've gotten quite a bit loose between these things, so we can get easily into the sides like this. And, yeah, these cutting points, they hold, they hold the hull to the internals of the ship, so we need to get rid of those before we can get these moving on. Get going, you. It'll be a, it'll be a good price on that. In the meantime, uh, might as well tear that off. Yep. <laughs> I'm surprised that's. Oh no, we, we we destroyed it. Oh well. Now we can get into here. Oh, oh, I almost made a cut there. That would have destroyed the power cell and probably electrified us. Because that stuff parks in space for some reason. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. OK, 
here. Well, this cabling is a bit new. I didn't run into that much before the reset. So I'm not too sure what we should do with it. But seeing as it's burning stuff, it probably wouldn't be too bad if it got destroyed. Because a bit of shorthand is that something that goes into the processor is about 10 times more valuable than some... Uh, yeah, then... Uh, yeah, rewording it. Something that goes into the bars is, in on average, about 10 times more valuable than something that goes into the processor, and something that goes into the processor is about 10 times more valuable than something that goes into the furnace. In general, because these lamps here are only worth a thousand credits. So, uh, yeah, they're pretty useless. Let's get to shoving again. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Because uh, what would be a, a ruined world without hyperinflation? Okay, this complaining about me destroying these junctions, but they're keeping everything together, so making them a, a no nuisance. On, get moving. No, this. Okay, yeah, these cables are going to be a pest if they're going to be sticking things together like that. Let's see. Uh, we do have a light, don't we? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Is that enough to free this panel? Still not. Okay, what is keeping you together with the rest? Like there should not be any attachments at the moment. Hmm. Something at the other side holding it shut. It is still a bit of an... It is still an early access game, so there are... Okay, there is has been some movement with the panels. So, yeah, early access, so they, there are still some clunky things going on. Okay, we can move those. We can chuck that into the barge. Get that moving. And that one as well. Yeah, sometimes uh, things want to stick together uh, even though they aren't actually making contact. Okay, keep moving you. There. What the heck is keeping this thing in place? Yeah, yeah, 3,000 credits worth of tabling ruined, but the panel is much more worth than that. Is it that bit? We can't cut that. Or is it just wedged in somewhere? Hmm. It seems to have moved somewhat, I think. Because it's not making a con it's not making contact there. And it's pushing back here. Is it wedged on the frame? I th I think it might be wedged in the frame. Okay, then a cut like that. And like that. Might free it up. Nope. Hmm. Let's see. What if we cut this loose? Fuel 
Hmm? What's still there? <laughs> yeah, my head is still there. I haven't shaved it off yet. Yeah, I have a trimmer for that. Okay. Even if we aren't using up oxygen, we are still using up fuel. And yeah, we, because this play, game takes place in a corporate hellhole, we have to pay for our own uh, supplies with this. Okay, just pull ourselves forward. Because, uh, yeah, heavy thing... Uh, small thing pulls on heavy thing, small thing goes to heavy thing. That's the hazard music. Okay. Yeah, if the other side is going to be a bit of a pain, then we might as well work on the other side for a bit. And here we have the airlock, which is very fragile. But we want to keep that in place because it pays decently well. And yeah, this, this, <clears throat> the cutter runs in a pretty smart system. It'll only cut what is, uh, yeah, what is between the dotted lines on screen at the time. So that way we can avoid accidentally cutting out the wall, <laughs> the wall of the ship. And there's another power cell. Oh, we bumped it. Yeah, the, ele the electrics generally lose a bit of structural integrity from just being removed. Oop. Yeah, yeah, I keep complaining about the paveling. It won't stop me from destroying more of it. it. Okay, the fact that it's parked right in front of my eyes, that might slow me down on it at least. We probably should have pulled this thing out quite a bit ago junction box so that should kill all the remaining electricity in the ship Salvage emphasis on should because often there tends to be a pocket or two of power still left somewhere for okay. you get to moving that bit in a well, bit and now back into the insides Okay. Another power cell. Let's not be in motion while we pull it out because you can't uh, maneuver and extract something at the same time. Okay, and this one is unpowered because the power was off in the ship now. Okay. Back in. And let's see too heavy to move because they're all being connected by the stupid cabling again. Let's see. And then a cut there. Will that be enough to free this? Yes, it is. Okay. So we can just get rid of them by two extra precision cuts. Oh, get moving. And slowly but surely, our material, our equipment is losing integrity. Our thrusters are at eighty-eight percent in the lower left, and our grapple is at eighty-two in the lower right. Yeah, big part, big pieces like this can still be somewhat manipulated by moving other big pieces around. Just by sheer friction. Okay, and another cut. And let me maneuver a bit lower. I hope the clacking of my keyboard isn't being too loud with all this maneuvering around. Okay. 
Now, I, I don't know if you can actually let's hold that still. Oh, we can pull the junctions out. This. Hmm. And, okay, if we try to grab the cabling, it grabs the entire thing. Maybe. Okay. All right, you can pull them off separately. That is good to know. <laughs> yeah. Now, shove that over there. We have to be a bit careful with these places because they do have uh, some suction effects. So if we get too close, we're not getting out. And I need to reorientate. Yep, that's down. We must throw this out into space. There we go. Now then, we have one more piece here. Maybe all this moving around may, might have loosened up the other piece. Why are you... Why are you being the same as your brother across? It's very obviously has moved, but it doesn't want to move any further. It's connected with something. The red bar shows that it's being... It's too heavy for us to move, even though it's already been moved on its own. What is holding these two in place? Could it be the cabling or something that's somehow messing with things? Okay, that has... Yeah, the, the cabling was causing the friction, I'm thinking there. There was a piece wedged over there. It made enough of contact for the game to think that, uh, yeah, they were attached fully. Still a heavy piece here. Three? <laughs> just almost three tons, tons of weight. Show off. Okay, yeah, the, these these cable bits are pretty much useless unless you throw in like a massive bunch of them. Enough that we can just ignore them despite the numbers that it shows. There we go. Yeah, the, the cabling was creating some sort of phantom connection. I'd seen that before as well with the bigger class of ship. Not sure if we'll get to that. I hope we get to a different brand of ship oh, this stream. We did unlock a di we did already unlock another. Though we haven't gotten to see those yet in the catalog. So when one of those shows up, we will be moving on to that. It'll be interesting to, s to see what they do with those early on. go almost to the third milestone with this salvaging and this should do the well they should finish up us up on that yeah upper bar that is uh, how much you have salvaged and how much you have destroyed in red okay Let's have a look what's in the cockpit. And the rest of what we might pull out might not be as valuable as the rest that we've already gotten so far. It'll still be an interesting look to see what else is in here. We always need more work. We should have opened these when they were still powered through everything. Oh, oh, that was a storage bin that I accidentally destroyed. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's just hell that you need to be a bit careful with your cutting from time to time. Because those storage bins are quite valuable for how easy they are to get. Are you getting... There we go. 
probably could have just cut through these, but oh well. Get moving. Oh, it's being... It's being obstinate again. It refuses to be affected by the push. Yeah, that's a bug. Anyways, let's crack this kinder egg open. It's uh, just some storage bins. No data panels for lore or world building. And we can still pull these out. I think after this one, unless there is anything specifically valuable in the cockpit, we might just leave it if we've already reached uh, the third marker of the salvage. Because I'm not sure if it's really worth it to grab these last bits. There's still a few thousand. Plans the wall of that. Plans whatever remained of the door with that. Yeah, let me check. Okay, 36. Yeah, the, the cockpit still holds a good amount of value. But I think most of the value in a ship typically lies in the outer hull and the reactor itself. Uh, yeah, let's remove these last pieces, send it into the processor, and move on. Right. The cockpits are typically... Um, oh, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're forgetting one thing. It is right up the front here. This glass is worth quite a lot. Okay, it's moving a bit. Stop moving, you. No, I shove it in and stop. It starts moving more. At least it's moving away from it's at least it's moving away from the processor. Okay. Get a big cuts in. There we go. Yeah, this is some thick ass glass. And even though it goes into the salvage, it's quite valuable. Forty-five thousand. The rest. Gunner, your equipment durability is dropping. Keep an eye on it. You don't want to be dangling in the wind with busted tools. When you see it happening, head on back to the hab and use a repair kit to fix them up. Yeah. Oh, we forgot the ass end of the ship. Valuable object process. Yeah, 10,000 credits, 17 destroyed. Another 10,000, 17 destroyed. There are 7,000 destroyed. And 33, yeah, 32,000. Yeah. In general, the cockpit is a lot more valuable for the processor than just cutting out all the little bits. Okay, that should probably be another few thousand. A few ten thousand. Okay. Uh, 62, 14. Yeah. So about 56,000 with the ass end. Oh no, uh, nine, okay, 100,000 each. <laughs> oh well. We're we'll doing this mostly for the story. And we still got over 95%, <laughs> just barely over 95% of everything. 4.6 million from that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good haul. Got a bunch of points from that. Straight to level six. And I used it. We should. Okay, we have we have enough points to go to the next rank immediately. And I'm guessing that we're holding that. Nope. They are. Aren't. Okay, now I'm a bit confused. Or maybe that was the bar from five to six. Yeah. Right. Good morning, shipbreaker. Your allocated ship time will be commencing shortly. Okay. 
Uh, let's. Oh, hello, we're. Oh, uh, hello, Knapper Zoro. Z Knapper Zoro, and uh, we're, we're being raided. Uh, we've got a small raid going on, right here. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> hello there. Uh, let's see. Welcome to, uh, yeah, Hard Space Shipbreaker. Let's see. Lynx Adju has a level 5 clearance. Congratulations, you've reached one of the major milestones in Shipbreaker career progression. Grand gaining access to the number one cause of death in the Shipbreaker profession, pressurization. It's about time we got to this. Some ships you encounter may or may not be pressurized or contain pressurized pockets. Breaching these paces incorrectly can cause an e explosion decompression, which can cause damage to valuable salvage and Lynx equipment. Because again, Lynx cares only for their equipment and not for the clones of the people they have stuck up here. To depressurize properly, Lynx advises the use of standard, standardized atmosphere regulators located through a ship. Lynx strictly prohibits ship breakers intentionally using explosion decompressions, so-called controlled decompressions, to enact rapid salvage. Reminder that your activity while in the salvage bay is monitored. Note that some, uh, some ships may come with damaged atmosphere regulators, which does not follow, allow for an authorized and safe decompression procedure. Yeah. It's another risk and another bill for half a million. Let's see. Uh, just played some hard space. Uh, put home for me. Uh, put home for me to make food inside. Uh, uh, surveyed and good luck cutting. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, put down. I guess you mean. Uh, either way, thank you for raiding and uh, the rest of you. Thank you for visiting. Oh, time. <laughs> Uh, 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 hello. I'm guessing the Dark Dimension from Marvel is invading. Early access, everyone. <laughs> Dormammu wants our souls. <laughs> uh, let's see that the... Uh, let's hope that it isn't in the bay itself. Oh, I, I think I know which ship you want to go for. Oh, we have our first javelin. Uh, I'm guessing you're out of... Well, it's up to you then. Do we go for the Southern Odin, or do we go for the first javelin ship? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we've also... Hello, next page. Okay, yeah, on the right here it shows you the, the ship... It's lost owner, the hazard level, total mass, total estimated value, what the uh, sorts of systems they're in, and the hazards. Hazard rating medium, lots of fire, lots of electrical, and lots of explosive. Okay, estimated values only, actual values may vary, yeah. Yeah, we have the, the frame of the previous ship isn't worth it. Let's see. Can I... Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Knapp, Zor, again. I kind of always prefer the science ships. I like them, many good stuff inside. And by the way, anyway, food, bye-bye. Enjoy. And thanks again. And yeah, the science ships typically have a lot of valuable stuff in it. Alright, our first javelin. I have only a little experience with these things. So let's just move. Oh, that danger means that it's pressurized. So we do not want to cut in this. If we could, because we can't cut the outer hull pieces yet. So, yeah, what can... Oh, we... Oh, I remember something now from my previous stream. I, I'd cut loose one of these cockpits and it blew out the side because it was pressurized. And I'd miss that. But let's avoid that. Okay, then. We have some pieces we can cut there already. But first off, where is the airlock? If there is, there's one up there, and there's another. Okay, let's not have the cutter in our hand before we end up destroying something. Airlock pressure levels dropping. There we go. And this place is already without an atmosphere, but that does have pressure. 
So, let's see. Hold this one. Airlock pressure levels increasing. Now it should reg will it regularize with the insides? No, it will not. Okay, pull it up again then. Airlock pressure levels dropping. A nice little detail that we won't have at the moment is that when you are in a pressurized area, you won't be using up any oxygen. Air pressure level increasing. Okay. Pull that up. It's said open that up. Okay, that was odd for a moment. And some posters. Let me grab that. And that, that'll make for better decoration. And whoever the hell this is. Now then, that one's... I think that's... Hardy. Okay, <laughs> party hardy. It's... Actually, we should hit this now. That'll. Nope. Air pressure level oh, it's the inside is the yeah, the outer side is still pressurized with this. Hmm. Okay, we'll have to decompress it then. We do that by grabbing on and a bit further away or not, and there we go. Yeah, some junk flying around. Luckily, we didn't get hit and nothing got destroyed by the looks of it. Okay. Well, yeah, that's this place now safely decompressed. Or at least this half. So let's open this up. Airlock pressure levels dropping. And move on to the other section. Because if we don't decompress that now, we're likely to going to forget when we get to it. Okay, open her up. Airlock pressure levels dropping. Hmm. Actually, maybe I some maybe something I could try. Uh, pressurize this place, please. Airlock pressure levels increasing. Okay. Yeah, you'll see in a. Uh, come on. Okay, it's not opening up. Airlock pressure level dropping. Have they added a chance for these things to malfunction or something? Oh, no, it's because there's no atmosphere in here, so yeah. Let's see, where is the regulator? Is there even a regulator in here? There doesn't seem to be, which is odd. You'd think the other half of the ship would have one of these as well. So, yeah, we'll have to resort to controlled decompressing again. Luckily, there isn't typically too much junk in the outer hull. And you were going to say? Airlock pressure levels dropping. Okay, this is the cockpit. Yep. Okay, here is where you had this stupid thing. All right. Uh, we're we're decompressed anyways now. So let's have a look around. Some power cells. A bunch of cutting points. Then we have whatever this all is. Probably some sort of stabilization system attached to everything. Another power cell. Where is the reactor? In this? Well, the reactor with these javelins, if I recall, is typically in the very back of it. Hmm. For now, we can start cutting around here. Uh, yeah. Now we're getting internally connected pieces as well. 
Yeah, these are holding something outside in place. We'll get uh, some. No. <clears throat> we'll get to ships that have their nacelles and such, or their engines held by these things as well later on. But for now, I think they're more for the structure itself. Okay. Yeah, any more on this over there? All right. And yeah, the, these javelins are held back. I'll help to get it by a lot of these little bastard pieces. So let's do a little twirl. Cut each and every one of them that we see. <laughs> An elephant in zero G, and that. Cut more than I wanted, but okay. So that was okay. That was a misclick. Okay, if, if that if my aim had been a bit off there, I probably would have ended up cutting that into the fuel tank. Yeah, be careful when you're cutting with this. Let's see. Well, for one, you'd cut your cigarette in half. And likely some very valuable stuff as well. It is only paneling that we're cutting with that. It would go to the furnace anyways. Like we can't we can't cut nanocarbon stuff at the moment, which is the processor paneling. Should it be the last one here? No, it is not. Still a few more. One more over here. And the panels are starting to come loose. A uh, bunch is there, but those are in the main ring. There. Yeah, not the most organized dismantling of these things, but oh well. What is that ice? Oh, that that must be the cockpit. Okay. Time to make our way out then. Somewhere. One of you was already floating off. There we go. Start peeling this thing like a freaking banana. Hello, why are you not? <laughs> a very high tack one my way. It's, that goes into the parts along with it. Okay, why are you being are you it's being held in place by this, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, it, it's decompr it's decompressed this time. Okay. Can have that float on its own for moments. Is, yeah, it is slowly moving. Okay. Oh. That was going with a bit much force. A bit too much velocity. Hmm. Yeah, it is a bit of a big chunk. We, pr we probably want to use uh, tethers more for these sizes. You know, pieces of this size. 
but we don't have access to them yet. So we'll have to keep our distance. <laughs> Okay, more panels. And why are you... There's no connection, please. Hmm. Is it just too heavy or is it wedged somewhere? Either way, let's move on to something else then. We'll find out what is in this piece's way in a minute. So for the moment we are just shoving these around. A bit more that way. And the Porsche has quite a reach on this thing. That is stuck somewhere. That is not. Okay, coming up. Ooh, bounced off. We do not want things to go too wild. These pieces are stuck to yeah, these are some pieces that are stuck together somewhere. I think they might be wedged around the middle. I think you can make an easy guess. What is in a lot of games and is either red or orange and very explosive? <laughs> now that's uh, fuel tanks, because, well, this thing is a tanker after all. So, yeah, we'll want to be careful with that. Actually, let's get in a bit close. Cut away at the supports around it. Because we do need to rem Yeah, glad to see that I have your confidence. Valuable object Credits awarded. Uh, not really. Then again, I haven't blown myself up yet so far. I have managed to electrocute and set myself on fire in previous streams of this. But not at the moment. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was more of a problem with acceleration and deceleration, but I'll take credit for that as well. Okay. Let's keep peeling this thing apart. They are stuck somewhere. There's no cutting points in these areas left, so I'm get I think they are being held by little annoying bits like this thing. Or if I cut you and your twin, even though that one didn't have any connection, no, you are not going to give up this thing yet. Aside, we will need to pluck you later. These these pieces should be. Oh, I see already what it is. It's the, Fuel levels are critical. Return to the it's these nanocarbon struts. They're keeping it together. Uh, and we can't cut that, so we have a bit of a problem in, ha in moving it around. That or it is just having a phantom connection again somewhere. Nice Actually, can we buy... No, we can't buy tethers yet, neither can we buy demo charges. Oh, oh this piece comes off <laughs> already. Okay, and there you go. And this we can maneuver around. But it seems to be 
wedged in by all of the other pieces. So let's get cutting on the ring. And actually, that goes ion ring. Okay, we do not want to cut that then. Processor. That's a very, that's a big ass cutting point. <laughs> Great two cutting point even. That's new, I think. Okay. Yeah, I these are definitely new. I did not miss you there. Any more cutting points in this thing? Up uh, there. And now we can chuck all of this into the barge, which is that way. It's still very heavy, two tons. I'm guessing these things are not just a stabilization system, but also part of the, you know, what they use for travel. Wait, you, you're telling me this entire thing is a cutting point? No, that's part of the ion ring. Okay. Okay, note to solve great two cutting points don't disintegrate like their smaller cousins. Maybe. Let's... Now we just have to maneuver these chunks around. Without slapping ourselves with two tons of steel. Hmm. Yeah, that's one of the that's one of the securing points. And that's going. Not going. Okay, these are going to be a bit troublesome on other ships. Last time that I played, javelins weren't really worth the time. Yeah. Oh, that's another of these. I, I forget the name of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, before the big update, Javelin ships weren't really worth it because they were a bit bare bones compared to the other ships that you could do of that class, if I remember correctly. But yeah, these Ion Rings, these Ion Rings are likely going to counterbalance that a bit. Let's see, how much is that worth? Okay, 75,000. Not that much, actually. Hmm. Yeah. And, well, it is the smaller ones. Now we can shove those struts to the processor. And... Hmm. Then this one, then we can pull that out, and maybe then finally the last piece of paneling can be oh, can be removed. It's colliding with the frame somewhere. Okay, get out. <laughs> it looks a bit like that, yeah. Oops, thruster damage, 75%. Yeah, th these things will start malfunctioning eventually if they get damaged enough. Hmm. We can't cut any of this, so we can't downsize this. So 
So we'll just have to pull it out. And all of that goes to the processor as well. And let's move to the other side and see if we can give this a shove to move it all in there. Instead of having to finagle the inner ring out. Let's get going. Just don't get caught on anything. Five tons. We, we did not mean to do that. Yeah, I'm seeing just... All of this just looks like titanium to me because I don't see any discolorations. Yeah. Hmm. This thing might actually be a bit much for the level that we're at the moment with our equipment. Hmm. And again, we haven't upgraded our stuff much, though I'm not sure if we really have access to much at the moment. You move back a little bit. I do not want to lose you to the furnace. I don't think we can even move this thing on its own. Here, we, we might need to go back and get some upgrades for this thing to be able to get rid of it. Here we can't. We can't cut. Uh, we can't cut processor materials. That's too heavy for us as well. Yeah, the only way we could move it was by <laughs> shoving the, yeah, the center of it. Hmm. Yeah, it, we'll have to, we'll have to exit. Uh, oh, that moved a bit more than I wanted. I just wanted the freaking airlock. Okay, down you go. I think it hit something there, but. Yeah, it still counts. It. Can I finally move you? No, it's just too heavy. Either way, all of this is detached now. So we should be able to pull this out without getting damaged. Yep. Okay, let's just pluck whatever we can still from this thing. Then we head back and see if we can upgrade some things. So I'm pretty sure we should have gotten access to some already. We didn't really get notifications of such. I'll leave the inside for later. Switch. Let's not destroy it. And yeah, we can also repair some of our things. Red light means emergency power. Just wait, but oh I I think I I think I launched it into the iron ring there. Oh well. Yeah. Again, showing that you should be a bit careful with all of this stuff. For now, we're heading back. This time without banging my head into the front door. Oop. That was a Switch game that I have next to here falling over because I have my Switch over here as well. Over there. We still got a thousand links tokens out of that. Without it even reaching the first marker. Hmm. Oh, no, oh, no, no. Okay, th those were the ones that we already had. We got two... Uh, 
We got 2300 from the stuff that we salvaged without even touching. No, th these are mastery points, not the Lynx tokens. Okay. Hmm. So it's pro it's salvage progression for Lynx tokens and just value for, well, mastery Pattern points. 9346 Your sleep period is now over. Have a great day. Yeah, can't even bother with initials and that last name. Let's see, new hat poster. Hat poster. And the bill again. And that's that. Okay, straight to here. Equipment. Equipment. Yeah, let's repair that. Repair. No. Not yet. Oh, didn't mean to exit. Repair this one because if this fails, we'll be stuck if we are run out of amp. If we run out of uh, fuel as well. Now let's see. Bigger range. More range in the grapple. Tethers. Okay, we were supposed to buy those ourselves instead of getting introduced to those. So well, we could have gotten those at rank four. No. Oh. Hold to confirm. Yeah. An enhancement to the standard handheld utility grapple. <laughs> Only now realize that abbreviates to hug. We're, we're, we're using a space hug. You're hugging spaceships. <laughs> The continuous van der Waals tether fueled system, or simply tethers, reduces the need for multiple shipbreakers to move a single heavy object. A versatile tool in the hands of skilled workers, the introduction of tethers led to the second greatest increase in salvaging efficiency in lake history, only losing out to real protein breakfast meal discontinued in 2262. If something has the word real in its name, uh, press X to doubt. Tethers are easy and intuitive to use. Press and hold your grapple secondary trigger to place the first contact point, drag the connection to another object, and release the trigger to complete the connection. Tethers automatically retract to pull connected objects together. They can also be used to pull objects into the processor, furnace, or barge for efficient and quick salvaging. Yeah. Let's see. Immediately we want more tethers. We don't... Yeah, we might as well grab that one as well. How on our... Nothing are there. Not really interested in the range, since most of our cunning is done up close. And we... We are just short of this object scanner. Or object scanning mode. Which would help uh, identify valuable stuff and such. Okay, audio resynth one. Everyone wants to be able to hear in space. Cutting edge links tech allows your suit to resynthesize audio from nearby hazards in unpressurized areas. Basically, with this, if you grab onto a fuel pipe or such, you can hear if there's fuel running through it or not. And the demo charges we, can, we, we are a bit away from. But yeah, we're saving up for the object scanner. So at the moment, we need 650 Lynx tokens. Any messages? No messages from the outside, at least. Oh, three messages. Tools, durability. Link salvage straps to provide only the safest and most efficient tools. However, even the best tools will break down with regular use. Damaged tools can exhibit several severe problems. They may overheat, misfire, or provide inaccurate readings. Your HUD will show the correct durability, or the current durability of your tools, and will alert you when their condition drops. Many tools can be upgraded to reduce the rate at which they break down. To repair your tools, use your HAB equipment interface between shifts. Repair kits must be purchased by the shipbreaker and can be obtained from a Lynx kiosk for a nominal fee, or you can loot them from the ships that you're salvaging. Addendum 10 to 2293, Lynx acknowledges that equipment repair kits can be found in the course of salvaging, but please note that use of these unofficial kits is not sanctioned. Lynx is not legally liable for providing the most efficient nor safest tools. Yeah, of course. Okay, this is from... Uh, I've forgotten her name. 
<laughs> hey again, Rook. You just wanted to say I'm impressed how quick you're picking things up. Not sure what kind of work you've done before, but you're a natu natural cutter. You probably noticed Lynx exactly, uh, doesn't exactly take great care of us. I don't blame them. They don't really have a reason to. Up until about a hundred years ago, workers like us would make groups called unions and fight for better wages, safer work, decent hours, that kind of thing. Basically balance things so people don't just get exploited to hell. Lynx was actually key in getting rid of all that. But there's a group of shipbreakers now trying to bring back the idea of a union. Change things for the better. Did you know Lynx keeps your DNA even if you leave the job? And if those hull panels you get 10 credits for are, so, are resold for a thousand apiece, that's the kind of thing these people, these folks want to change. Anyway, it's all hush hush. Link stumps it out real, right quick. But I see that you're a good person and a hard worker. I'll tell you now, they're going to use you up and you'll get nothing for it. I put you on a list for news from the group. Comes every couple of days, read him, don't read him, trash him, whatever. Just please don't report me, I just want you to have the info. I was glad someone gave it to me when I was new. And yeah, I'm going to point out a stupid thing with her uh, at the moment. She's sending this over the official intranet. Or the company intranet. So uh, yeah, it'd be really easy to track down who would be sending stuff like that around. From group on the, from undisclosed, unverified welcome. For authorized members only. Thank you for signing up for the Salvage Workers Unite newsletter. We are happy you're here. As our group grows, so does the ability to effect positive change for all shipbreakers. As a reminder, the activities of this group are only for authorized members. Please respect the mission and the privacy of your fellow members and do not share outside the group. We wish to improve work conditions and ensure that the voices of shipbreakers are heard and respected. We intend to coordinate with the Stellar Commission to start negotiations with the company around policy changes. <clears throat> Here are the key demands we intend to bring. Uh, wait. Is it, uh, yeah. One, cancel the debt. The dangerous work of a shipbreaker should not come with crippling debt owed to the company that profits off that work. We demand the debt be cancelled immediately. Two, works place safety. While shipbreaking is a dangerous task, there are unnecessary risks involved due to company policies or quotas. We demand improvements that would greatly decrease the risk of injury or death. 3. Investigate contract clauses. We demand the shipbreaker contract be audited by the Stellar Commission to ensure human rights are honored. In particular, the clauses around ownership of the genetic sequences of shipbreakers. Thank you again for joining us. Solidarity is strength and we are on the path to improve all of our lives. Salvage Workers Unite. Yeah, I think I pointed this out in the, pre yeah, the last time as well. But technically, every shipbreaker isn't... Well, isn't originally human anymore they are a clone that well <clears throat> they're a clone that Lynx cores make so if this were to get if this were to move forward they'd likely start arguing that clones don't have human rights and all that shit hmm well that's basically confirmed because on the when we arrived uh, uh, with all of this, we were freaking murdered. Hey. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, extremely bad. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Uh, but yeah, we don't know how it bad exactly everything in this world is on that front. There were, at least the shipbreakers have their hopes. It seems that this stellar commission is better than Lynx. And let's see, that is just a big ass Contact chunk. All on its own. It's a, it's almost a Pac-Man of hull. And yeah, these tethers, like it said in the instruction, right click, point one, point to point B, point A goes to point B. And yeah, that makes moving these pieces so much easier. 
Now, are you still stuck or can we just not move you? A tether will turn red, yeah, like that, if it can if it has issues, but it can move. Okay, that should be enough. Tethers don't stay around forever. They have a small time limit. A few lights lost. But uh, that's no big deal. Now we can just send that down. And start plucking this all out. Gorman chair. Okay. <laughs> Float in there instead of hanging there. Okay. Can we actually still... Okay, we can throw the posters into the barge. Object accepted for processing. Credit deposit. Okay. Now, let's get to a bit of cutting to just get rid of the wall. Now, unless it's directly attached to the wall, it should be safe from getting uh, cut up like that. And it seems that we missed a bit. Yep. Okay, that was an accident. Let's go for a rougher cut. Can it move now? No, it cannot. Yep. Okay, something is holding it in place on the underside. It's another phantom collect connection. I'm guessing it's the freaking table. There you go. Now, will you come off? The heck is holding this piece in place? The heck? Don't tell me it's the freaking lights or something. That went in the wrong thing. Hmm. Okay, now oh, now it, it's loose. Okay, I I, mi I missed the the angled corners bit. Okay, off you go. Oh, actually, not yet. Pull you in. We want to see what these posters are worth. Probably not much, but still. They're not even getting a notification, so probably not much at, at all. Okay, send that ballerina off. Okay, this has moved a bit more than I wanted to. That ejected the battery. Let's see, all of this is just one piece. Yep. Uh, 87. Okay. Chair that comes at the price of 40, 4.80. 4.8 more. And these posters are probably not really worth it, but we'll see later if they appear in the uh, yeah in the bill at all. The rest of this should all be furnace, except for that and the last switch. Pardon? Okay, and then we can send the rest of this off into the furnace. There we go. 
Probably some junk. No. Let's have a last little look. Oh, another console. Okay. There are still some lights on this thing, but lights aren't really worth the time to get them out. So now we can just move this thing in its entirety into the furnace. <laughs> yeah, that's a, much, that's a lot easier than just having to cut it up. In the meantime, let's pull you towards us. And we might as well start working on it now. So you've, you've flipped over a bit. Yeah. Let's see. I find it a bit odd that they stopped it. Did they at any point give a, a price for the door consoles? Destroyed the door. Oh, oh, there was still a door in the frame. There. there we go. Okay, let. You are a bit too close to everything over there for my feeling. Not you. Oh, okay, the wall came loose. Yeah, that. Okay, that would make for an easy way to get and an easier way to get entry than just squirming through the door there. Okay, and what have we here? Yeah, from now on we can also find data drives with stuff like that on it. Could just be worthless jingles. Could also be uh, journals from people. Chuck some stuff at the back as well. Salvage secured. Credits deposited. I don't. It's not a storage bin. Those are structural uh, pieces. So the rest of this straight into there. Tether supplies are low. Another poster. We'll have to see if those are worth plucking off or not. But yeah, that's the cockpit gone. Now we can start on the fuel tanks. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to have to make some careful cuts. We can't cut the, the structure itself. Which makes sense since it's exposed to space. You don't want something fragile there. Okay. At the same time, I want to be... I need to be a bit close to be able to make these cuts, but on the other, I do not want to be close because, well, potential boom. <laughs> And not in the way of the Mario character. Okay. Yeah, there's a Mario character called Boom Boom. Okay. Okay, he 
these things are still attached to each other. Can I... Hmm. How do I... Actually, it's not attached to this side here. So if I were to cut these four struts, like on the other side... It got a bit too close to the tank itself. Okay, are you going to let go now? Okay, we can nudge them out now. Uh, let's still be careful with these things. Is there no way to get these to let go of each other? There should be. Then I'm going to test it out. Why are you pulling towards me? Okay. If it wants to come towards me like a freaking kitten, I'll just pull it out like this. want that thing exploding in the middle of this because that will send everything everywhere. And I don't want to shove it either. It is mostly out now. Okay, if I put a tether there and just send you to the very back. Okay. That should be okay now. Still rather move it a bit over. Okay. And that's the fuel done. Seventy-two. Forty then? Forty... Five... Fifty... Now it's counting them differently. Okay, I'm, I'm guessing there must be different levels of fuel in them. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now we have all of these destroyed struts. And the outer structure, which was... Well, we're sending off like that. It, this is something satisfying about sending something big off with a tether like that. And all of the junk that's <laughs> falling through its slots. Yeah, we'll clean up a bit. And then we're getting to the last half of this thing, and also to its reactor. And we should... well, we should have, we have plenty of time to finish this thing off, I think. Especially with Tether's helping us. Material that can be easily solved by doing this. Yeah, I think it only... I think you can only damage yourself when the speed over here is in the red. Let's see, we have... Okay, 13... Yeah, tethers. <laughs> okay, of all the things we grabbed that little bit. All right, then. Yeah, not too bad. There's only, like, half a light. With this part, we'll have to get to the cut points again, but at least it's de <clears throat> it's all depressurized. First, let's get to these big-ass antenna. Then we do that, and that, and off it goes. Bomb 
bomb, but I didn't say it was destroyed. Amplifier. And high gain antenna, yep. Hmm? It, it gave it gave yep. Yeah, it gave two notifications for the parts. This, yeah, amplifier for 37, five, and the high gain antenna for 18. Yeah, you mean the the butt these you mean? Yeah, it, I think I think they should be worth something, but it just I guess it's not enough for it to for it to get a net notification. Hmm. We'll have to check at, once we get paid out for this. We'll have to find that out. Now, let's see. To remove all of these again. I, I almost thought you were going to say Hillian's Hell there. <laughs> Yeah, too late now. Eh, not really. Mm. It was more Valheim that was giving me trouble, not you. What then? Yeah, but I got off it before it got any damage in. <laughs> yeah, my character jumped, but not much more. Hello, what are these holding in? Was that supposed to hold the antenna in place? Okay. It, it didn't. Hmm. Oh well. No need to cut that then, since it'll go in with the rest of the processor. And there's our reactor. Just keep coming. Go. That should be the aft of the ship ready to be plucked. Not most of it. Okay. The biggest problem we will have with these bigger ships is that the back of it will be closer to the furnaces, which means a bigger chance of it accidentally getting pulled in. Especially once we get to the the wide ships as well. Okay. There we go. Oop, I missed one. Okay. We'll see how much these are worth at the end again. Said it like five times now. Okay. How much? Yeah, the atmosphere regulators. Let's see what is keeping you in place. <laughs> Okay, I think yeah, I think it's yeah, it's mass with these things that is keeping it in place. So we do that and that. 
That way it'll get pulled down somewhat, not enough in this case. Technically, we could just put a tether to uh, these things to, to pull it away from the back. Let's see. It's not moving too much, so we can still pluck out some things safely. came loose from that. can be a bit annoying when Bard's items separate from each other. Okay. Console. Yes. The screen there. It might as well pull this off on its own, so it doesn't go floating off. Hmm. Oh, that's glass. Okay. Okay, wait, that already got a piece loose, so... Okay. Okay. Not going to complain much, especially if it gives us easy access. And some pieces are more secure than others. Hmm. Okay, chair. Actually, we can just stick over here. Yeah, straight view. Careful when pulling things towards you because you can easily slap yourself in the face. Okay, this terminal and the rest, except for the posters. Okay. Was worried for a moment there that I might have hit the fuel tanks. I'm not sure if you can accidentally destroy stuff that is already in the barge. Be careful all the same. <laughs> okay. And anything else left in here? Just a table. And the rest of this, except for the lights, is for the furnace. Okay, so we do that and that. It has some trouble pulling it, so we give it some assistance, and there it goes. Now that's not our, prob not our problem anymore. Okay. Let's see if we can hold your mobility a bit. Oh, it's already <laughs> this piece is already coming loose. Okay. There you. There. You. There. It's, not, it's a good idea to, if you're sending multiple things at once to point them at different corners because if one thing gets in crosses the beam of another tether, it'll disrupt it. A storage bin. Okay. Oh, I think I know what the storage bins were with that the, the cloth stuff was on top of. Oh well. Now we can just do that and that. Caution. Tether supplies running low. And there we go. Easy as that. There you go. Salvage Why are you secured. suddenly piping up, Credit Weaver? Applied. Okay. I think our HUD is taking damage, or there's residual radiation in here still. Hmm. Salvage deposit accepted. Either way, we've reached our third milestone, and all of this seems to be processor stuff. Hmm. Yeah, there, there was some, there was a minor update before the, I think it was before the story update that had to do with radiation. 
So yeah, it could just be that there's a cloud of radiation hanging here now from the, the reactor. There was a tether breaking. And we might as well use our last one there. Cutter, looks like you used your last tether. Head on over to the kiosk if you need more. And that's it. There's only a little junk floating around now. So we can just head back. Wait for that to get sucked in. Let's not enter too early, because otherwise we'd still be stuck with it. And there it goes. Okay, that that sort of hasn't popped up before. Okay. Uh, might as well refill in our tethers, because they are not refunding those. Because, well, I've said it enough. Let's see. 93% for 4 million. 6,000 points. <laughs> and to the next level. Okay. Yeah, a good shift with, with that. Mm. Okay, I definitely need to get a better chair at some point. Uh. I'm unsure about getting one of those gamer chairs because I keep hearing uh, alternate things about it. I get they're supposed to be absolutely Good terrible morning, for your back. Nine back. Okay. All right, folks. Got a priority hmm? message coming in from corporate. Everyone, put down what you're doing and have a listen. Maybe they're gonna give us some holiday time. That'd be awesome. Hmm. Huh. That would be a first. Probably just another Paulson kid getting a cushy exec job. Hush up now, y'all. This is an important message to all Link Salvage Division employees. It's come to our attention, thanks to a very loyal member of our family, that there has been talk about forming a shipbreaker's union. A union is a dangerous thing where extensive fees are extracted for so-called representation of your workers' rights. At Lynx, our top priority is already your well-being. This is why union activity is strictly prohibited by your contract for your own protection. To safeguard you and your work, we are immediately dispatching an administrator to every salvage sector. This administrator will oversee operations and ensure proper employee conduct. They are authorized to correct worker behavior by any means. And they will remain in place until we can guarantee company-wide integrity. Until then, remember, the company is your family. The union is your enemy. No holiday. Told you. That's wild. I haven't heard anything about that union stuff. Have you? Of course not. Probably happening around the Martian districts. They've always been quarrelsome. You heard anything like that, Lou? No. <laughs> hey, Weaver, do you know when our administrator will show up? Uh, a week, maybe? Coming all the way from HQ at Jupiter Gate. When they get here, we'll need to be on our best behavior. Oh, great. Ah, it's nothing to fret about, all right? But they are going to be checking everything. Salvage logs, transmission records, operational efficiency. Oh, great. You'll be fine, Kai. It's not a performance review. Blue's right. Now let's just try to keep our heads down and weather this storm together. Now go catch some rest. See y'all tomorrow. And that is where Act 1 ended, a bit hey. early this time, I think. Don't oh. worry, this is a closed channel. There won't be a log. This uh, really isn't good. They're gonna make our lives hell. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared. 
I'm sorry for involving you. But you need to know I'm not gonna stop fighting. Whatever happens, I'll make sure nothing comes down on you. Blue out. Yeah, because there is a mess, a record of her talking about you in s at least once in the system. The question where I have is how things are going to continue now. Oh, let's see. Uh, hey there, Rook Weaver got busy and asked me to review your salvage records today. I saw that you snagged an old data drive in that ship. Look, I know that the networks on Earth can't re and don't really give you the full picture about what's happened, uh, happening across the colonies. Uh, don't well, you know, don't want y'all getting a read on what's actually going on off Earth. These data drives, though, they're uncensored info, and they'll give you the full view. Sometimes it's useless junk, someone's recipes, or bad photos flexing in front of the mirror. Other times it's a corporate rail mail or a ship captain's personal log. Anyway, don't tell Weaver this, but I'm sending you some software to extract the usable data of these things. You know, you'll see a new data recovery tab on your HAP terminal. Soaking in solar radiation tends to mangle most of the data, but you should be able to pull a couple intact files off of each drive. I hope that it gives you a better sense of the bigger world, warts and all. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, that was the that was the mission. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, having a figurative guillotine hanging over your head tends to distract. Yeah, the tell me you are bad at acting without telling me you are bad at acting. Here's that basically. And what makes me want to vomit is just the obvious bullshit of, well, we have your uh, uh, best interest in mind. Well, they're letting people handle explosives without and have to pay, uh, obviously, care more for the equipment than the actual people. Yeah. Let's see. I'm not going to re read that mom and pop to Megacorp stuff because that's that is just you know, corporate propaganda. Like how they all claim they were a family pro a family business and uh, yeah, and built up to such and such without, of course, telling that in the process they got bought up by such you know, such and such. So they aren't actually well anything. Let's see. Contract clauses. This is the uh, union m newspaper. In this issue, we would like to address our demand and of, revi is of revising the shipbreaker contract. Did you know that the company owns any and all intellectual property and any inventions or artistic creations made by their workers? That's right. You've signed away that right the moment you took on this job forever. Were you aware that by signing the contract, you'd agree to not only uh, to not have any body modifications done, such as piercings, tattoos, or contraceptive devices, without company approval? Are you aware that the company has free reign over when to terminate you to cook a new spare from the system, and that there are no regulations or provisions in place for when that should occur? They can literally do it for any reason. Or that the continued use of the, uh, a dysfunctional spore, uh, dysfunctional spare, is purely at the discretion of the company, aka Weaver. Not to mention the policy on toilet breaks being a whopping 28 pages long. These and many other aspects of the Lynx shipbreaker contract are inhumane and in desperate need of regulation for the dignity of our workers. Salvage Workers United is determined uh, to have these shortcomings addressed by regulation from the Stellar Commission. Yeah. Uh, I Maybe they are may, maybe they are laying it on a bit too extremely thick, but yeah, the rest of what I've seen of you know, this game does make it uh, believable that this is basically cyberpunk dystopia without the actual cyberpunk part. <laughs> okay, this is new. Before this was just another tab. 
uh, yeah, you were going to say? Or where did you forget by the sheer <laughs> oddness? <laughs> Distracted by the data miner, quite literally, on both ends. <laughs> Okay, we'll read this and then we'll probably end it because we're a bit over time. Let's see. Okay, so this was hidden along with the uh, the jingle. Let's see. Re reminder, Solar Day Rail Mail. To all links from Mortimer Corny. Reminder, Solar Day statutory holiday cancelled. Greetings, friends and valued co-workers. Bullshit. Just a friendly reminder that all Lynx employees, excluding the executive's team, are expected to report to work on Solar Day this year. What an exciting day to celebrate and honor the true lifeblood of our solar system. Let's do our sun proud and continue our pursuit of pushing human and kind deeper into the galaxy one additional uh, day this year. Exciting times indeed. Your pal, Morty. Yeah. I hope this freaking uh, guy got signed into the fucking sun. <laughs> yeah, that's what most people want these days. And from what I've been hearing on the news and all, uh, people are getting a bit sick of the circumstances that companies are holding him in, at least in America. Like, people are just striking more and more and more in. Because, uh, yeah, there's no, there's so-called worker shortages, uh, which actually in normal English translates to people are sick of being well, handled, are being treated sick, uh, are sick of being treated like slaves. So, yeah, I, I hope, I personally, I hope that it continues until the co companies there are just forced you know, to bend the knee and provide for actual living wages and such. And maybe that'll... Uh, 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 a bit doubtful that that'll have a worldwide effect, but still. It starts in one place and it continues everywhere else at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Bezos is a bastard. Yeah, that was all. Bezos is a bastard. Yeah, Jeff Bezos, isn't that the Amazon owner? <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. Uh, hopefully the rest of this test will go a bit well. Uh, it, it'll make, with the scene switching, it'll make for a better s transition between places than just this, this straight hard cut. Uh, if I can get the... <clears throat> Pardon again there. I stream after dinner, so yeah, <laughs> get a bit burpy at times with that. Uh, yeah, I'll... Tomorrow we can test this as well. Uh, let's see how, if it works well enough, and then we'll uh, introduce it into the main week streams. Uh, as for tomorrow, I already have the games set up, and I'll need to test them still after this. If one of them doesn't work, I'll just move on to the next in the list. And this time it will be an actual normal something Sunday where we try four game up to four games. And uh, yeah, no uh, capture card test. <laughs> Uh, on that note, it does work well with the PlayStation as well. But for now, uh, thank you everyone who has been watching now or later, and thank you especially to Kieran. And yeah, until next time, but until then, until then. Now, which was it again? There we go.